Well, I just wanted to make sure that my friend Ann Coulter didn't get got by the Wuhan virus. So I put in a call to her today, and here she is. How are you, Ann? Fine, thanks. How are you? I've been social distancing my whole life. <laughs> I was going to say, for some of us, this is just life as usual. But for goodness sake, I mean, I'm watching the media, as are you, and you would think that Donald Trump was out of his mind saying we got to get back to work. I know, I know, I know. Um, I notice, I'm not saying that this necessarily <laughs> um, means they're wrong, but I do think it's worth pointing out when people have, may have motive to say certain things, the ones who are telling us that aren't suffering at all. They're cable and network news hosts who are still making millions of dollars. Um, oh, and by the way, they still get their TV um, makeup and lights, so they look fantastic and their guests look appalling. Right. <laughs> So it's just, and the ratings are through the roof, um, so it's coming up roses for them. Um, I'm not saying that that means that what they're saying is wrong, but it's worth throwing that into the mix. Um, and in fact, I mean, it, it did. I had all of my speeches this spring were in, were in April. Um, I love giving speeches, college speeches. I was debating Barbara Boxer. In fact, I think it was supposed to be today um, out at the Nixon Museum in Yorba Linda. Um, nope, everything, all speeches canceled. And I, I mean, maybe in the fall, um, hopefully they'll meet, be made up. I, I hope it won't go to Zoom. That's always possible. But I really like to be there in person, especially on the college campus, not just the college campus, but it's nice to meet people. Um, see what people are thinking. I mean, this is why I've always pointed out that, well, me from my speeches and talk radio hosts like you have so much more of a feel for what's going on in America than, than for example, um, TV hosts sitting in, their, sitting in their studios with other New Yorkers or Washington, D.C.ers. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And, I mean, I'm watching some of these hosts um, interviewing some of these politicians, and you would think that I live in a completely different country than them. Nancy Pelosi is more worried about how much ice cream she has in her freezer than whether or not small businesses will stay afloat. No, that was a pretty <laughs> appalling video. Um, I'm mostly just glad that the video of her um, at the, whatever it was, the Chinese Day Parade, um, that, what was that, like mid-March with her saying, come on down, don't worry about the virus. Um, I mean, this is just the, 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 the entire reaction to this. It's, <laughs> this is why I can't write another book now. I've said it all in either in Trump We Trust, um, the yay, happy side of Trump, um, or um, resistance is futile. This is exactly the theme of resistance is futile. There are things you could attack Trump for, um, certainly the ones you and I have covered, um, and we'll leave that aside for now. But no, 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 no. <laughs> no, the, the media has to go for what is the most ridiculous nonsense counterfactual complaint we could make about Trump. Let's fixate on that one. And then even if you're ticked off at him, as I periodically am, you know, you have to rush into his defense. This idea that he, it was his fault when they were in the middle of impeaching him, um, and there were no deaths in America, for not alerting the public and putting a quarantine down immediately, um, is just such nonsense. Or the idea that uh, hydrochloroquine is terrible and we shouldn't even be thinking about using it. Really? Doctors seem to like it. Oh, but Trump likes it. Yes, I was thinking of you when I was writing that section um, of my column this week because I know you were very active um, in trying to save lives during the, the AIDS crisis in America. And there were two, two things about that that are just completely 100% flipped to now with, with, with this de deadly disease. Um, number one, <laughs> I, I, I confirmed this. I went back on Nexus, looked up the article. Uh, the entire media and 99% of gay spokesmen were indignant at the idea. As AIDS is ravishing their community, um, um, that they would shut down the bathhouses where, um, for your more genteel listeners, um, there was lots of anonymous 
um, anonymous sex of the type that spread the AIDS virus. Um, but no, 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 back then, oh, no, get bathhouses, that's the best part of gay culture. It would be like shutting down the Sistine Chapel to Catholics. You can't do that. But now we have a virus and, oh, yeah, shut down the entire country, shut down beaches, shut down parks. Shut down mm-hmm. golf courses, even though all the studies keep showing fresh air and sunshine, reduce the transmission of this virus. Absolutely, we are fine with that. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is exactly what you just mentioned with this hydroxychloroquine. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, it was, in fact, the gay community that put pressure on the FDA for the first time back during the AIDS crisis to allow the compassionate use of drugs that had not been approved. Their perfectly logical argument was, we are dying anyway. Let mm-hmm. us be the human guinea pigs. We are begging to use this stuff. If it doesn't work, we're no worse off. We're dying. If it does work, yay, hallelujah. Um, and at the time, you know, that was treated as, as a major civil rights milestone. And, and, and thank you, gays. And I agree. Thank you, gays. I yeah. think compassionate use of drugs, um, allowing people to use them if they're going to die anyway. And with full understanding, this, this may be counterproductive. But now, with this drug, <laughs> the coronavirus, which by all accounts, um, I mean, sure, um, there may be... There may be ugly side effects, but but we've seen the testimonials on TV and in print from people saying, I I, I was dying, I thought it was over, I took this, and the next day I started feeling better. I mean, it's not like it's even a drug, which which was not true in the AIDS AIDS crisis, that, that, that it's a drug that hasn't been approved for anything. This is approved to treat malaria, so it's, quote, safe. Um, under the FDA's, gu- uh, FDA's guidelines, you still can't use a drug until it has been proved to work for this particular thing. Um, well, that seems perfectly crazy. But to watch journalists and, and people, uh, the media and Democrats, I, I mean, they are really, in the way they, are, they would prefer people to die and not have this cure work. They are cheering for this, for this drug to, 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 to not work. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and then you watch uh, them now all lining up behind Joe Biden, who can't even say the name. He calls it COVID-9. He is uh, almost <laughs> uh, incapable of stringing an entire sentence together. And now Barack Obama and everybody else is saying, oh, but he's ready to lead. I don't know what he's going to lead. Uh, and I don't know how they're going to get past uh, this election. But if they continue down the path that they're on, in and they alienate every single American by just, you know, never being content with anything this president does. I think it's going to be a landslide. I mean, if you think they laughed at you when you were on uh, Bill Maher's show and the first person to come out and say, oh, Donald Trump's going to win, um, go out there now and and say that, that he's going to win 48 states. And I bet you, you might get laughed at, but I bet you it happens. I'm not as optimistic as you are, and I hate to be a pessimist, though I often am going into an election. I always like to think of what the worst possibilities are and then and then plan to fight around it. But, I, I, I mean, at least in one way, this isn't to say anything about, about Trump or how he's handling it, but it, it really does play to the advantage of Biden having the country shut down, having having Biden appearing no place. I mean, remember, we were all looking forward to the Biden-Sanders debate because you are right. Biden, this looks like elder abuse putting Biden out there. So the longer they can keep him in his basement, the better off the Democrats are. They want this to be an election on nothing but Trump or not Trump. And we'll tell you who the other guy is after the election. Um, The other thing that was occurring to me that they're going to use this to, to help Biden with is... Um, the way things look now, I mean, who knows how things are going to shake out or if they will come up with, with a, a workable test or a workable cure or treatment or something. But if, if things don't change dramatically, there isn't going to be a debate between Biden and Trump. They'll do, they'll do an interview, yeah. um, you know, with those fair members of the mainstream media interviewing Trump, and then separately, you know, a day later, they'll interview Biden. But there, there's no audience participation. That is not, that, that is going to help, that's going to help Biden, too, and hurt Trump. He's good in front of an audience. Yeah, but you got all of these Democrats, these crazy governors like uh, Gretchen in, in um, Michigan, and... <laughs> 
and Murphy in Jersey, and even the one they think is so glamorous, you know, Cuomo in New York, they're just ticking off the American public. They are I think acting, you're right. Yeah, and that, and that is going to help Donald Trump, because even if they don't like him, and even if they, you know, haven't figured out how awful a candidate Joe Biden is and whoever his running mate is, what they, what they will not forget is these governors who ruin their economy and ruin their lives. I think you are right. I, I wish Trump on whichever day it was, I think it was Monday, I woke okay. up thinking, wow, Trump has really, he has, to quote, Dewana Brawley, manipulated them, yep. manipulated them into, they always, you know, I would make fun of the 3D chess crowd, but maybe he's done it here, because the media had absolutely taken the position, Trump has nothing to do with when we open the country up again. It's not his decision, it's the governor's decision. Right. Um, and wow, that's fantastic for Trump, because... I mean, you're sort of screwed either way. You open right. up the country, and every subsequent death will be lovingly covered. Whether right. whether it's, I mean, the, look, these deaths are horrible. Um, I want to hold China accountable. I think this is outrageous. Let's you know go back and look at who invited them into into trading with us. That was Bill Clinton. Um, it's been a disaster for manufacturing. It's been a disaster for all kinds of crap they've sent us. Those, uh, the drywall that poisoned homeowners and cost trillions of dollars, the dog food that poisoned the dogs. I mean, you can go on and on with what a disaster this relationship has been for the U.S. Um, Trump could go a little more pedal to the metal on that. <laughs> right. Well, and, and there's just so much. I mean, when you when you really have to sit down and, and, and think to yourself, who's going to pull this country out of the horrendous economic position we're in? You've got to go with the businessman. I mean, it's our only hope. So I'm yeah. really predicting, and, and you know, I, I did it last time. You and I were the first ones out of the box to say he was going to win. And I'm really, I'm, I'm convinced now, the more I look at it and the more I study it, and the more states I look at and their legislators and their governors, the more convinced I am. You can see a landslide uh, oh, second only to Ronald Reagan. Oh, as the, as the cliche goes, from, from, <laughs> from your lips to God's ears, yeah. um, I'm quite a bit more nervous now. Um, I am glad that he has pulled back from saying he's going to make the decision, though I wish he hadn't come out and said, I'm in total control. Wait. Be, Why do you want to take that decision? That's right. Not but this is this is the three. Give it to the governors. But this is the three D chess. He got everybody he screaming. They had, he had it perfectly. The media had said, "You have no role in this." He should have just said, "Yeah, I'm, you're right. We're a federalist system. Right. States are different. I'm going. We're going to back up the states and encourage them." Could have done that. No, he has to do this macho thing, um, no, which but, he always does. You could but, get him to the, the media. So knows how to manipulate this guy. Uh -huh. um, say, "Oh, you don't have any role in this." Yes, I do. It's my decision. Yeah, I'm the one who decided to rob the bank. <laughs> you see, I think that I think that he set that up, and now the governors have taken over. And when they mess up, and they will, because people are going to die. We have no herd, uh, you know, uh, immunities Immunity, built up, yeah. so people are going to die. And now it's going to fall on the governors, and Donald Trump is going to stand there and said, "I told you, you should have let me do it my way." Ah, uh, listen, I, this guy is to me. He's he's uh, he's as smart as a, as they come, and you just if he'd only build that fence, you'd be on my side on this. Yes, <laughs> yes, I did see during um, at some point during the the quarantine. I guess it was early on. Yeah. Um, some um, Mexican smugglers, I don't know if it was smugglers of humans or smugglers of drugs, got in a shootout with our border patrol at the border, and they did so by posing as construction workers on the wall. <laughs> and all I thought was, oh my gosh, <laughs> there are construction workers. workers. Yay! Yay, exactly. I sent you a beautiful videotape of the drone watching the wall get built. And stay safe, and, you know, it's always fun talking to you. The new article came out yesterday. For those of you who want to reach it, read it, it's on Frontline, or just go to Ann's website, annecoulter.com. Thank you so much, Ann. Take care. Good to talk to you, Joyce. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.